Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the AW Dynamite review. And this is going to be a review of last night's edition of Dynamite, which was the July 22nd edition. Of course, this was from the Diddy's Place in Jacksonville, Florida. And I watched Dynamite uh, earlier today. I recorded it because at work last night, that's why I didn't do a Dynamite review uh, last night. So I gave you guys uh, earlier in the day yesterday a uh, another uh, commercial break, another MTV2 commercial break. So, but Dynamite, I really enjoyed the show. Uh, I thought it was a very good show. Uh, we had a open challenge, which eventually got turned into a no disqualification match. It was Cody uh, versus Eddie Kingston with the TNT Championship on the line. Uh, we had MJF in action. He ended up taking on uh, Griff Garrison. And we also saw a Falls Count Anywhere match between uh, the Young Bucks and the Butcher and the Blade. And in the main event, uh, we saw Jericho and Hager of the Inner Circle end up taking on Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy of the Jurassic Express. And a surprise return uh, came into uh, play post-match, after, uh, after the match was over. But overall, Dynamite was a very enjoyable show. And let's jump right into the review. So Dynamite opened up uh, last night with the TNT Championship on the line. Cody defending it against Eddie Kingston. Now, before the match got on the way, uh, we had Cody and Arn Anderson. They were in the ring. Eddie Kingston ends up walking out, had a mic on him. And he ended up talking about Cody always saying that he's grinding in life and in the sport of professional wrestling. And... He said, and uh, Kingston ended up saying, that probably wasn't so bad when Cody was uh, wrestling has-beens. So Kingston ended up saying that he's been around junkies and alcoholics growing up. And he was like, you know, Kingston ended up saying that he's a grown-ass man and will put Cody in the ground and smile if he tries to preach to him about anything. Kingston went on to say that uh, Tony Khan paid him to show and also to kick Cody's ass. So Kingston ended up uh, telling Arn Anderson to stop staring at him or, or else he will gorge his eye out. So Kingston ended up going on to say that the match will be a no disqualification match. So Cody then ended up accepting the match. So we got Cody versus Eddie Kingston. No disqualification match. TNT Championship was on the line. And this was a very good match. Really uh, enjoyed this match. Uh, this is the first time uh, that I saw Eddie Kingston compete uh, in the ring. I haven't seen uh, any of his matches. This is the only match that I saw uh, him compete in you know, with Cody. And I got to say, he's good in the ring. Kingston's good in the ring and has a lot of uh, good offense uh, while he's in the ring. And when the match started, uh, Kingston ended up uh, attacking Cody from behind. And both uh, Cody and Kingston spilled out to the floor. Uh, they both traded some punches. Uh, there was a point where Cody ended up taking his weight belt off. And Kingston ended up taking the belt, ended up smacking Cody a few times with it. And then Kingston ended up removing uh, the padding that was on the floor. So Kingston ended up removing uh, the padding. He ended up looking to go for a move uh, on Cody. But Cody ended up reversing it, ended up uh, back body dropping uh, Kingston to the floor or on the floor. And this is the uh, 
The good point of the match that I really uh, liked and thought it was crazy, where we saw Kingston end up going under the ring. He ended up retrieving a bag. He ended up uh, getting back into the ring, and he dumps uh, what's in the bag. And what was in the bag was thumbtacks. So Kingston ended up dumping the thumbtacks in the middle of the ring, and Kingston uh, then yelled, fight me, to Cody. So Cody, well, Kingston ended up trying to go for a body slam. Cody ended up uh, reversing it. Kingston then ended up uh, powerbombing Cody on the thumbtacks. So Cody went uh, back first, powerbomb through uh, the thumbtacks, which was crazy. You could, you know, feel or look at the pain that Cody uh, was in after being uh, powerbombed on those thumbtacks. And we saw, you know, a whole lot of thumb thumbtacks, uh, st you know, sticking out of Cody's back. And then uh, at the end of the match, Cody uh, was able to get uh, the figure four lock onto Kingston. Kingston ended up tapping. So there you go. Cody ended up winning, retaining the TNT Championship. But very good match uh, from both uh, Cody and uh, Eddie Kingston. Uh, like I said, it's the first time I saw Eddie, Kings Eddie Kingston compete here. Haven't seen uh, other matches that he had. But I gotta say, the guy is good in the ring. But overall, very good match. So then after that, we saw John Moxley. He was backstage, and Moxley ended up saying that he's the kind of guy who, when he says something, he will just do it. He ended up saying that, just like when he told Taz he was going to tear Brian Cage's arm apart. Moxley ended up saying that Cage was very close to another six months of rehab, and that Taz made the right call by throwing in the towel, as what we saw last week uh, in the main event. But Moxie ended up saying that next time, he's not going to let go. So there you go. That was the, uh, the promo that uh, Moxie ended up cutting backstage. And then we saw MJF versus Griff Garrison. MJF, of course, uh, came out along with Warlow. Before the match got on the way, MJF ends up getting on the mic. And he ended up telling Garrison that, you know, Garrison looks ready to go. But he's a bit nervous. MJF ended up saying that it's understandable, though. Because he's in the ring with a prodigy. So then MJF gets confused uh, with Garrison. He confuses Garrison with Jungle Boy, <laughs> which was funny though. So MJF confused Garrison with Jungle Boy, and he wants to tell the fans who he is. Garrison ends up telling uh, MJF that that isn't his name. Jungle Boy is not his name. He says he's Griff Garrison. So MJF ends up talking shit about Garrison you know, more picking on him. MJF ended up asking uh, Garrison how cool it is to share the ring with someone who is undefeated. So Garrison ended up bringing up that MJF lost a tag match. So MJF ends up telling Garrison that he brings up a good point. So MJF then ends up smacking Garrison uh, in the head with uh, the mic, and then the match got on the way. So MJF ended up launching Garrison into the corner, chokes him with his boot, and the match itself, it was meh, it was meh, in my opinion. It was just MJF, you know, getting a easy win to keep his undefeated streak going. So there's a point in the match where MJF uh, gets back on the mic, and he ends up telling Garrison that they, they, 
they may have gone off on the wrong foot. So MJF ended up saying that I've never been pinned. I've never been submitted. So MJF then ended up wanting Garrison to tell everyone that he's still undefeated. So Garrison smacks the microphone away from MJF. MJF then steps on Garrison's finger. MJF ends up yelling at him uh, to say, you know, one more time that he is undefeated. So Garrison ends up finally saying, you're undefeated. So Garrison pops uh, the mic back in MJF's face, goes for a roll up. MJF ends up kicking out. So MJF then ends the match with a pile driver to Garrison. So there you go. MJF ends up winning the match. You know, got to keep MGF's undefeated streak going. You know, it's going to be the right time where AEW just, you know, wants to let uh, MGF end, you know, his undefeated streak, which who knows when that will uh, happen, though. But they're doing a pretty good job uh, with MGF, you know, going undefeated. You know, I mean, MGF, I always say about the guy, one of the best uh, heels in uh, professional wrestling and you know whenever he gets on the mic you gotta listen to what he says he is absolutely uh entertaining on the mic there you go mjf ends up winning the match overall match itself is very meh in my opinion they went to a commercial break you know with the whole picture in picture There you go, MJF ended up winning. But, you know, when you look at MJF, you're looking at him as the next AEW world champion. It's going to come It's going to come one day. It's going to come. I predict, you know, he might be the uh, longest reigning uh, AEW world champion whenever that happens, whenever they put the title on him. I may be uh, predicting that, you know, too far, but the guy deserves to have that title around him. And then we went backstage. We saw Tony Schiavone. He was talking to uh, Reba about Britt Baker and how Britt Baker is doing after her nose surgery. So... Reba ends up going on to talk, and Britt Baker yells for her to come back and help her. Britt Baker, uh, we go back there. Britt Baker, of course, still in the wheelchair. It says role model on uh, the wheelchair. Baker's nose is all bandaged up. So Britt Baker ended up talking about being a role model and how she was able to finish out a match. After her, no after her nose was busted open. Britt Baker ended up saying that uh, her comeback will be the best ever. And it will be better than Michael Jordan. And then we had Reba you know, go on to say, oh, you know, Michael Jordan's the best. You know, I watched Space Jam like <laughs> she also threw in uh, Space Jam, which I, uh, which I really like because I really, I really love Space Jam. One of my favorite uh, childhood movies. <laughs> I think she said, "Oh, I watched Space Jam like 16 times." <laughs> so, but it was cool. Uh, Reba to reference, you know, Space, Jam, you know, Space Jam. So Tony Schiavone and Reba end up uh, both interrupting Britt Baker. Britt Baker ends up telling them both to shut the hell up. So she ended up going on to say that. She's Michael Jordan, and nobody should count her out at All Out. So Britt Baker is probably going to be, you know, all cleared, going to heal up, uh, and she's going to compete at All Out against Big Swole. So, you know, we're going to be seeing that. And then we saw 
Taz and Brian Cage come out. The Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar of AEW. With Taz being Paul Heyman, Brian Cage being Brock Lesnar. <laughs> which, you know, we all say, you know, Taz being the Paul Heyman, Brian Cage being the Brock Lesnar of AEW. So Taz ended up uh, getting on the, get on the mic. And of course, when Taz gets on the mic, I always say this. We all got to listen to what he has to say because the guy is that good on the mic and still good at cutting promos. So Taz ended up saying that he and Brian Cage had some issues after he threw in the towel uh, on Cage last week. And he ended up saying, but cool heads prevailed. Taz ended up saying that he'll continue to work with Brian Cage. He ended up saying that he'll be damned if he was going to stand at ringside and watch Brian Cage's bicep, bicep tendon torn for the second time. He ended up saying that he stands behind what he did as a business decision. Taz ended up saying that Cage will never, ever be in that position again. He ended up saying that Cage has an FTW mindset. So, so they got so Taz got interrupted by Darby Allen. Darby Allen, of course, made his return last week. End up uh, taking out Brian Cage with the skateboard, where Brian, where Darby Allen was on. Sorry about that, but I was saying, you know, Darby Allen end up uh, returning last week uh, after the main event uh, with Brian Cage and uh, Moxley, and Darby Allen end up uh, leaping off the top. Ended up taking out Brian Cage with uh, the skate with a skateboard, which knocked Cage out of the ring. So Darby Allen gets to the ring, and Ricky Starks ends up attacking Darby Allen from behind. And Cage then ends up power bombing Darby Allen uh, on the stage twice. He then power bombed uh, Darby Allen into the ring which looked crazy. And Starks then ended up uh, picking up uh, Darby Allen, planted him uh, right in the ring. Starks then ended up grabbing Darby's skateboard. He gives the skateboard to uh, Cage. Moxley was shown running through the crowd, and he was carrying a barbed wire bat, and he ended up chasing off uh, Taz, Cage, and Ricky Starks. So it was noted on commentary that Starks, uh, that Ricky Starks uh, is looking to have a business uh, relationship with Taz and Brian Cage because there was a clip that they showed uh, that happened on AEW Dark, which I don't, I don't watch AEW Dark. So I just saw that, that little clip of uh, what they showed. So apparently they said on... On AEW Dark, uh, Starks ended up helping out Brian Cage. So I guess that's why Starks is going into this uh, business uh, relationship with Taz and Brian Cage. So we might be having a uh, team here with uh, Brian Cage and uh, Ricky Starks. You know, Ricky Starks also being uh, managed by Taz. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty cool. So we had that. Then it was announced that we are going to be getting a AW Women's Tag Team Cup tournament called the Deadly Draw. It's going to have 16 women and 8 teams. So we'll see how that goes. You know, hopefully you know, it will be a pretty good uh, tournament. You know, the AW... Uh, Women's division, you know, you know, it's getting a little better here. It's still kind of, uh, still kind of rocky here and there, but th hopefully, you know, it gets to being more better as we head into uh, this upcoming uh, tournament, this women's tag team cup tournament. So that was announced. That's going to be uh, coming, uh, I guess, next month. 
because in the promo said come in the summer. So it's probably going to be happening uh, next month in August. And then we saw backstage, uh, we went to Alex Marvez. He was talking with uh, Chris Jericho. He was there, of course, along with Santana, Ortiz, and Hager. Jericho ends up telling Marvez that he's still annoyed that Orange Cassidy ruined his $7,000 jacket, which Jericho was still wearing after last week where uh, the orange juice ended up pouring all over uh, him. And Jericho ended up saying that he's going to embarrass Orange Cassidy. And he ended up saying that the inner circle will embarrass the Jurassic Express. Because they thought what happened to Jericho last week was funny. So Jericho ended up mentioning that Luchasaurus isn't really a dinosaur. But they're going to make Luchasaurus extinct. So Jericho then ended up asking Santana if his jacket still smell like orange juice. Santana then ended up replying to Jericho saying, it does, it does smell like, it does still smell like orange juice. So Jericho ends up walking off saying, damn it. And that was that. I thought it was kind of funny that Jericho was still wearing the jacket after, you know, the uh, juice, after the orange juice uh, pour from the uh, Raptors last week. And then we went to the Falls Count Anywhere match between the Young Bucks and the Butcher and the Blade. Uh, this match started when uh, the Young Bucks uh, ended up going backstage. Uh, they were with a referee. And Matt Jackson ended up saying that they want to get things going right now. So they went backstage into uh, the kitchen area. And right when they went into the kitchen area, we saw the Butcher and the Blade uh, already there. Uh, looked like they had some meat that was on the table. I was surprised it wasn't chocolate chip cookies that they were making because they were dressed in their white uniforms. Looked like they came out of the bakery. I'm like, oh, I was expecting chocolate chip cookies to be on that table, not not meat. So the match got on the way. They were swinging at each other. Nick ended up kicking a table into the blade. And... Uh, he leapt off of it onto uh, the butcher, and this was a pretty uh, this was a pretty good false count anywhere match, which went all over uh, the Daily's place. Uh, there was a point where uh, Matt ended up uh, leaping down uh, onto uh, the butcher uh, with a leg drop, and the table didn't break. And Nick ended up using a cookie sheet uh, with upside butcher's head. And it just went back and forth between these guys. And there's a point of match where, uh, where Nick ended up jumping off the barricade with a spinning heel kick to uh, the blade. Uh, the butcher then ended up doing a running cross body, which ended up putting uh, Matt through a table that was leaned up against the barricade. And before that, the blade was going for a senton out of the ring and there was nobody there and he barely he barely ended up uh clipping the table and the table didn't break uh which that looked crazy and then that's when the butcher did the uh, the run cross body to matt which put uh matt jackson through a uh, table that was leaned up against the barricade and then it spilled onto the stage matt and nick did uh, double super kicks uh, to the butcher, and we had Matt and Nick, uh, both of them each climbed up the stage scaffolding, and they both did a elbow drop uh, and a senton onto uh, the butcher and the blade. So there you go, the Young Bucks end up win the match. Overall, a pretty good uh, Falls County away match. Like that, they went around. Uh, the Daily's Place. Good match. Good false count anywhere match. And then we went backstage and we saw Alex Marvez. He was going to, he was talking with uh, Lance Archer. 
Uh, of course, Jake the Snake Roberts was there. Roberts then ended up talking about Lance Archer being frustrated, sitting around, like used furniture. So while Roberts was talking with uh, Alex Marvez, uh, we saw Lance Archer ends up going into uh, a locker room. And Archer was being the hell out of a bunch of guys back there. So Archer ended up coming over and he mumbles a little bit. And then he ends up saying that everybody dies. And then Lance Archer ended up shoving uh, Marvez. And that was that. And then we had Ivelisse versus Diamante. So this was a women's match. Ivelisse, you know, I'm glad to see Ivelisse again after, you know, she was in Lucha Underground. You know, it's been a while since I've seen Ivelisse compete in the ring. But this was a pretty uh, decent women's match. Ivelisse ended up uh, starting off the match, swinging away on Diamante. Diamante ended up firing back and hits an arm drag to uh, Ivelisse. And there's a point in the match where the commentary end up cutting to uh, Big Swole. Big Swole uh, was at home because of uh, her suspension. Sorry about that, but I was saying you know, Big Swole uh, was at home uh, due to her suspension. And she ended up saying, what bothers her about Britt Baker is that she thinks she can get away with anything and not worry about the consequences. So Big Swole ended up saying that at some point, brittle Britney's fragile ass, as what she's calling Britt Baker, is going to have to meet her in the ring and face some consequences. So hopefully we'll be seeing that at All Out. And then that's what uh, Big Swole had to say. And we went back to uh, the match uh, with Ivelisse and Diamante. Diamante ended up winning the match. Uh, she ended up uh, doing a inside cradle on Ivelisse. There you go. Diamante ended up uh, winning the match. But like I said, it was awesome seeing Ivelisse in the ring again after, you know, haven't seen her since, you know, you know, competing in the ring since Lucha Underground. Overall, match was decent. Then we saw Hangman Adam Page versus Allen, five angels of the Dark Order. This was a uh, pretty uh, decent match here. Uh, this was uh, Hangman Adam Page's uh, first singles match in a while. So uh, it was back and forth between the both of them. Uh, we had a point in the match where uh, the Dark Order ended up showing up on stage. Brody Lee wasn't out there, and Cocabana wasn't out there. So Hangman and Page ended up getting the win, uh, ended up delivering the power bomb to uh, Angels. So there you go. Hangman and Page ended up winning. Post match, you had the Dark Order. Uh, they end up looking annoyed at uh, what the match was, you know, at the outcome of the match, you know, what Hangman and Page went in. So Page was asking them if they want to come in the ring. So Brody Lee and Cocabana then made their way out to the stage. So Brody Lee ended up heading into the ring to talk uh, with uh, Page. Brody Lee ended up saying that he's been nothing but impressed with Paige in AEW. He ended up saying that he's not impressed with his lack of friends when he's imminent danger, when he's in imminent danger. Brody Lee ended up saying that he's not looking to fight, but the Dark Order could protect him, not in a bar or in a ring. So Brody Lee ends up making an offer uh, for Hangman and Page to join the Dark Order. 
So Paige ends up again on the mic, and he ends up saying that he appreciates what Brody Lee is saying. And he ends up saying to Brody Lee that he's not sure that he's ready to join a cult right now. So Brody Lee ends up saying to Paige that, you know, he just, that Paige just made his bed and hopes that he enjoys his sleeping. So Brody Lee then takes Cole Cabana to the back and most of the Dark Order then headed uh, in and they were fighting uh, Hangman and Paige. And then we saw FTR, Dax Harwood, Cash Wheeler end up running out. They had a cooler in hand. They end up launching the cooler into Silver and Reynolds. So FTR end up clearing out uh, Uno and Grayson. And Kenny Omega then end up running out. So he end up noticing that FTR is already in the ring. So Hangman and Page ends up thanking FTR. And he ends up taking a beer from them. So that was basically that. And then uh, the commentary uh, guys, you know, JR, uh, Excalibur, Tony Schiavone, they end up announcing what uh, we're going to see next week on Dynamite. So next week we're going to be seeing Hangman and Page and Kenny Omega versus Evil Uno and Stu Grayson, uh, where the AW World Tag Team Championship is going to be on the line. We're also going to be seeing Hikaru Shida versus Diamante. Darby Allen and John Moxley versus Brian Cage and Ricky Starks. It's going to be a tornado tag match, so that's going to be pretty. Uh, that's going to be pretty good. And now we're going to see, of course, Cody defend the TNT Championship once again in the Open Challenge. So there you go. That's what's announced for next week on Dynamite. And then we went to the main event: Jericho and Hager versus Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy. This was a good main event, in my opinion. We had Jericho and Jungle Boy uh, get the match started. And we had a uh, certain uh, superstar or guy that was out there, a uh, guy by the name of uh, Serpentigo. So Serpentigo, at the, towards the end of the match, jumped up on the ring apron. And he ended up whacking Luchasaurus on the back with uh, Jericho's bat. And there was a point where Jericho was going to use the bat uh, earlier in the match. But Aubrey Edwards, who was the referee, ended up uh, standing between Jericho and Jungle Boy. And she was shoving Jericho. She ended up telling Jericho to ditch the bat. And so... That was what we saw earlier in the match. But so Pentago, like I said, jumped up on the apron, whacked, whacked Luchasaurus with Jericho's bat. And then Jericho then ended up hitting the code breaker to Luchasaurus. And there you go. Jericho and Hager end up winning the match because of that. Post match, you had uh, the inner circle. They end up being up on the Jurassic Express. And then Serpent Serpentigo goes up to the top, hits a shooting star press onto Luchasaurus. So then we see Serpentigo ends up taking his mask off. And it was revealed to be Sammy Guevara. So Sammy Guevara ended up returning last night after... A month of being suspended after the whole, uh, you know, Sasha Banks and him uh, thing got out of hand of uh, comments that he said uh, four years ago. So, but yeah, finally we see Sammy Guevara back on AEW television, you know, last night. So the Inner Circle ended up continuing to beat up on the Jurassic Express. And then Orange Cassidy's music ended up hitting. He came out along with uh, 
Chucky e. T and Trent. So the best friends end up running out ahead of Orange Cassidy. The inner circle end up retreating out of the ring. And so there you go. And then it was announced that uh, it's going to be the best friends, Orange Cassidy, Luchasaurus, and Jungle Boy versus the inner circle. It's going to be uh, next week, also on Dynamite. So we're going to get that match next week. And pretty much that was basically how Dynamite went off the air. But overall, good match uh, from Jericho and Hager and uh, Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy. And a very enjoyable Dynamite this week. So anyways, that's it for the Dynamite review. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up. Comment, subscribe. And there will be no uh, SmackDown review uh, tomorrow night. So that probably won't be up until Saturday. I won't be able to do the review until Saturday. So until then, I will see you all later.